There's a, there's a red oh, button in the yeah. back. It's done. Yeah. If it gets recorded, it gets recorded, then I'll put it up on Canvas. If not, oh, don't try to watch it at 11 p.m. the night before the test, because I have to approve it to look at it through Google Plus or whatever. Um, and I try to go to bed a decent hour most of the time. So if you want to watch the videos, if it actually uh, comes up, try to do it a few days in advance because you have to send me your email and you get approved to go watch. Because I use YouTube to like send videos of my kids to their grandparents. I don't think you guys want that all public. So what is public health? So we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. The definition that I like is and I wrote down technology, science, and the art of making, of making the public health. So there's lots of disciplines that are within the public health realm. We'll go over those a little bit and what some of them mean. And basically what the public health, what the World Health Organization is saying is that no, nothing we've done up to this point, um, even vaccines, even though that's in there, um, has a great has had a great effect on making life longer. It's done public health type things. There's a couple of pictures up there. Um, two of the public health initiatives. They not don't have the presentation open. What are a couple of things you, you think the public health world touts? as we did this, we are awesome. Vaccines. Water sanitation. Water sanitation. Water sanitation. Pasteurization, good. Got the ones that are up there. Sewage. Washing hands. Seat belts, stop signs, so road safety. Sex education and family planning. Road obesity on there, I don't know about that one. They're not doing very good on that one, obesity. By the year 2048, this will appear somewhere on the test, I don't know if it's the first or second. By the year 2048, all, all United States citizens, according to BMI, will be on the way. All. Like, that's insane. All is like everybody, right? So, you're either going to change the way BMI works, or we're just all going to continue to get bigger unless we do something about it. We're in a perfect seat to help with that. I don't know if you, what you look like for your practice, if you're just going to be civilization based, and if you don't have subluxation, or if you have some other thing, I don't care, I'm just adjusting subluxation. I don't want to talk about anything else. Perfectly cool. That's a great model. You're missing out on a huge population, I think. It was knee chest for five years, and only did subluxation, and if you had anything other than an upper cervical subluxation, then I didn't talk to you about it, because I only adjusted C1 and C2 and occiput. Um, so that was my world until I kind of realized that I'm getting fatter and sicker and my adjustments, maybe it was me, maybe it was what else the patient was doing, my adjustments were not holding. Like some of these stories you hear in the upper cervical world, I adjusted one time and then didn't have to adjust for ever, whatever, six weeks, eight weeks, I wasn't seeing that. It could have been me because I you know, knew when you practice and just learning. And, but some of my classmates who did other techniques or whatever, after several techniques were holding forever. Maybe it was the technique I was using. But I found, and other people that are not upper cervical or just have civilization based, are finding that adjustments aren't holding now as much as they were when they were practiced 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So obesity is huge in other chronic diseases, and we're going to see it in our office. So hopefully, the public health world is getting more and more into that. Do you think that over time, um, our, what we view as healthy changes, like what's healthy now, isn't necessarily what was healthy like in the 50s? 
Can everyone hear that? Same statistics. Do what we view as healthy now, is that the same view of healthy in the 50s, in the 20s, in the 80s? Why? Because everything back then, they didn't have as much of, like the vaccines, they weren't all there yet. All the, like the whole process of processing food wasn't the same. Like it's, yeah, they're more sick with not having refrigeration, like all that stuff, but they had more things that were more raw and just like real food compared to everything being medically modified. Okay. But do you think what we consider healthy now? Yeah, like the standards, so that we can add preservatives to everything or add sugar to everything, and certain corporations or whatever still make money off of that because we're still considered healthy. Anybody else? Are we healthier, or do the standards of health change? <clears throat> Research little things a little bit more and get more information and more stats. Yeah, but we also sometimes it, it, it creates um, diagnoses where there wasn't one before. Like for example, getting hit by a flying duck. Yeah. Sure that's the dumbest thing ever, but I guess that's so, yeah. so health standards have changed. I, I think I was alive then, so I don't know, but based on what I'm reading and things like that, they're trying to make compare apples to apples, but that's virtually impossible. Because uh, there's chemtrails, so whether you believe that or not, there's vaccines, there's MRSA, there's other hospital acquired infections that people weren't getting a long time ago because their hospitals were in dirt, right? So the health standards I think could change, but they try to compare it out with that. So getting more specific, I don't know if you can read that over there. Seven, seven, um, I, didn't, I just learned these when I got here, so I didn't use insurance in the real world. 739.1 is a supplementation <laughs> of the cervical spine. The code means non-allopathic lesion to the cervical spine. Like how demeaning is that? It's not on the back, like, whatever, like, that, there's nothing, that doesn't mean M99.01 is the same <coughs> code, but it's segmental and somatic dysfunction of the cervical spine. I actually think it's a better definition of what we do. So ICD-10s are kind of giving us better definitions and letting us into the medical world a little bit. Not that we necessarily want to be medical, but we want to help as many people as possible, and helping 8 to 12% of the population sucks, because there's that other 90% that needs help that will never talk to us because they don't understand what the words are that we say. So, I don't know why I got on that tangent. Oh, you said I see defense. So. Um, so, I think standards of health are changing, but in this class, we try to compare apples to genetically modified. I'm curious if 
Well, PMI was BMI, so they were just, which, maybe not at this point in my life, but at one point, I was considered obese, claiming BMI, because I was 5'10", 200 pounds, but I also was way lifting and strong and not doing that anymore and not a lot. So it's, yeah, but it's a number that they can go It is scary. Right now, 70% of the geriatric population is considered overweight. 34 of that, 35 of that is obese. Do you feel that they can sometimes use this uh, measure as a uh, not, not, not any, I don't want to correct it, but I'm to say use too generally, or we say it could be one of these problems. So like yeah, most people in the NFL are always in Yeah. And they're relatively relatively healthy.
record. My back hurts, my neck hurts, it's okay, I can go to medical school later. So, as far as public health goes, even public health professionals don't have a great definition of what they're doing. They go more on the initiatives that they're setting and things of that nature and, and how they're studying. I thought that was kind of funny because that's exactly how I felt when I was in your position. Oh, you're going to be a quack, huh? You're studying quackery. Or, why didn't you choose med school? So I thought, okay, I appreciated that. Have you ever seen that presentation before I did my speech? That was way better than mine. So most of the increase of years, which I thought was interesting, is not from actually from meds. It's from all the other stuff that we kind of mentioned. It's the seatbelts. It's family planning. It's uh, washing your hands. It's vaccinations. It's treating. It's not pooping in the streets. It's all the other stuff, not just medicine. But I bet if you were to go ask your parents or friends, that that kind of would be in reverse. That most people think that it's because of medicine that we're healthier and living longer. And it's just not true. The diet was kind of cool. So basically, the, um, I think public health initiatives to an extent are almost a personal choice versus um, things that are mandated. So if I want to wear my seatbelt, I can wear my seatbelt. If I want to stop at a stop sign, I can or don't have to. Yeah, and there may be repercussions, like getting a ticket or killing someone else or myself. Um, but that's kind of a personal choice. And most people, when it comes to public health, they think that it should all be, not everyone, especially not chiropractors, it should be in the government box. It's really not. It's more at the personal level, and then we apply it broadly, or it's um, done at the local level. So if you smoke weed in California, you're okay. If you smoke weed in Texas, you're stupid. You get caught smoking weed. Okay. So there's different different rules depending on what state you're in. The way that we look at public health is through a couple different ways. We look at the epidemiology, which is basically the study of statistics, the study of um, a disease, and what's being done about it, and how we can continue to prevent it, or prevent it at all, or study of uh, breastfeeding. Is it good? Is it bad? You know, in the like, 50s or whatever, breastfeeding was considered bad for the baby, and it's the, formulas is actually better for the baby than the mom. Which to us, that's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Most people now think the same thing, but that's how good the medical world and the advertising world was. Breastfeeding is bad for your baby. That's insane. It's kind of healthy. Anyways, there's statistics. There's the biomedical science side, so the vaccine side. There's environmental science which a couple of the guys last quarter were really into some of the environmental science stuff, the water fluoridation and um, how ozone is being affected in rainforests and things of that nature. Um, there's social and behavioral science in that, uh, in public health, which I think, you know, I'm learning a little bit more, or relearning, is that the mental health side of public health is, is huge because it's, kind of overlooked. Like, people are aware of autism and ADHD, but they don't necessarily want to know what it costs society yet. There aren't no good epidemiological studies on kid has ADD, kid is now adult. What's the productivity level of an ADHD adult versus a non-ADHD adult, an autistic adult? Um, and so, uh, like, big diseases like that are being studied, but like depression, is studied more on the lines of how many drugs can you put into this person before having 
having them commit suicide, kill someone else, or just die. Uh, that's not what they're studying, so I apologize on that. But they're, what they're not reaching is the productivity level, how much it's costing uh, the United States in, in the workplace. They'll come up with studies and say, okay, if you're depressed, it's going to cost an extra $150 million this year if you take all the depressed people and take what insurance pays for them. But not necessarily, how can we make that depression go away and what's the productivity level now? They want to know how much it costs to medicate people. Um, health and policy management. So in the public health world, like what she said, so basically inspecting restaurants is a public health sector and being able to have policies and regulations around that. Which again, is a personal choice. You don't necessarily have to follow the policy per se, but you can get in trouble from them. The overlying goal of public health, if we were putting it all in a nutshell, I guess, is prevention. And if once it occurs, how do we intervene? Or if it's already occurring, how do we intervene? And they do that basically in a five-step process. First is to define the issue. So Ebola. Identify the risk factors. Let someone with Ebola fly on an airplane. Kind of don't, but okay. Let's put them on an airplane or let a nurse that has Ebola go on a cruise ship. That's identifying the risk factors. How does it transmit? How does it go through? How are we going to spread this thing? Okay, once, once we have some way of Recognizing that there's Ebola, what do we do about it? So we develop and test at the community level. I was in West Texas when the Ebola breakout occurred and we had a potential scare. And like within 12 hours, the entire like block, so maybe like a, not quite a mile, but maybe half mile radius was like, you can't go in that area unless you live in that area, and if you live in that area and weren't in that area recently, you can't go to your home. So they created a quarantine. Did it work? No Ebola was ever found in Lubbock, so sure, it worked. But so we have the ability to develop some sort of plan and then implement it. And then once it's implemented, what do we do to make sure that it's going on? So we monitor it or survey it. So that's public health science um, as far as taking care of um, questions on those five steps. Kind of makes sense, right? Identify subluxation. Does subluxation exist? Identify it. Correct it. Did the correction work? Yes or no? Get a few stats on it. Yes or no? And then monitor to see if you're adjusting health. There's <coughs> Subluxation preventing. Probably a little bit more intense than that, but that's one way of doing it. Um, be very aware of this. This shows up as I show up on two questions on a quiz that you may have taken already. And it'll show up on midterms and it shows up on boards and it shows up time and time again. It's primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. Primary aims to prevent disease or injury before it even occurs. This is done by preventing exposures to hazards that cause disease or injury, altering unhealthy or unsafe behaviors that can lead to disease or injury, and increased resistance to disease or injury should the exposure occur. So that's the textbook definition. After me rambling on that, what would you guys say primary prevention is? Primary prevention on any public health issue. Flu shot. Almost. Hand washing. Flu shot would be second. In debate. Primary. So anything to stop an event from occurring. So the example that I use in this particular, and we'll go through a couple, but it's Education on not smoking. It baffles me how many people smoke. Coming back to California, I was in Texas for a year. I worked out of my bio. Worked at a place I'm not allowed to tell you guys that I worked at. Um, 
So I'm going to be courting you. That so in Lubbock, Texas, they were still allowed to smoke indoors. Like to me, I grew up here, and I don't think they were allowed to smoke indoors since like, I don't know, 1992 or something like that. So it just baffled me that like restaurants and bars were fighting for the right, it was on the ballot, to smoke indoors. I was like, that is insane to me. And so someone was like, well, you're anti-vaccine, that's like sending your unvaccinated kid to the school. I mean, it's not the same thing at all. But okay, we'll have a discussion about it. So sometimes you have to listen to people's stuff as a doctor and be like, okay, I kind of think you're silly, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to try and educate you on how to be healthier and how to create a healthier community. So education is typically the primary means of doing so. Uh, another example, well, we'll go through secondary first. Secondary textbook definition aims to reduce the impact of a disease or injury that has already occurred. This is done by detecting and treating a disease or injury as soon as possible to halt or slow its progress and return people to their original health. Kind of practice sounding, right? Find, detect, correct, restore health. So secondary is okay, you're going to smoke. Congratulations, you haven't paid attention to anything over the last 30 years. But let's screen to make sure your lungs are okay. So the secondary prevention is doing lung screens. In that, in this particular example. Tertiary, textbook definition. Aims to soften the impact of an ongoing illness or injury that has lasting effects uh, this is done to, by helping people manage long-term, often complex health problems and injuries, such as chronic disease and chronic impairments, or as far as death, in order to prevent uh, or increase, in order to prevent them to lose more function and to increase their quality of life. So, in the smoking example, tertiary would be chemotherapy after they've already had. So educate, screen, medical intervention, typically, is the way that I think of primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary intervention. So education. Primary is like preventative, educational stuff that is kind of no trainer, no, no real intervention that you can that you notice because it's already been done to an extent, unless it's something new, like the Ebola, then we have to figure something else, and that's the other five steps. Secondary is if you're going to do it or if it occurs, how do we stop it and make you go back to normal? Tertiary, if it's gone so far, how do we keep you from dying? That's the extreme. How do we keep you from being completely disabled or dying? So primary is a two-lane highway. Little dots in the road is primary prevention. What do you think is secondary? No, she's better than you know. Primary is like stop signs, stop lights, dividers and roads. What do you think secondary is? Think about a car crash. It's tertiary. Airbags, seatbelts, headbags. But you already going to hit. Yeah. I should have well, that's not that. So once so uh, when you're driving down the road, in order to not get in a car accident, there's stop signs or whatever. Bumps in the road. Secondary is once you've been hit, what's preventing you from dying, hopefully? Seat belts, airbags, things like that. Secondary, it might be like the cameras and the sensors and these self-driving cars or whatever. Or maybe that's primary, I don't know, that's above the textbook's knowledge at this point. Tertiary is uh, the EMS. So once you've been in an accident, once the car accident, once the seatbelt or airbag worked or didn't work, what's the, what, how do we keep you alive, basically? 
So vaccines, I would imagine, would be primary. Secondary would be you have the measles. What do we do with it? Tertiary is you really have the measles. How do we keep you from dying? Good question. So an example of secondary would be like keeping that person who has it. Say that again. That would be probably a secondary, primary. Well, I, okay. Secondary is typically once that person has it, <coughs> how do we keep that person at bay? What other place that we get? The definition for secondary is keeping that person keeping away. Keeping that person away, you know. Keeping this disease at bay. I think so. I mean, typically. I think I'd write this all three, but this is the more scientific version. So, one minute. On Canvas, there's an assignment. It should be published already. Go in and pick something and do primary, secondary, and tertiary intervention on it. Not everyone do the same thing. There can be duplicates. Um, it's just not having any seatbelt example I just did. So examples of things you could use are cancer, breastfeeding, um, water pollution, things like that. Try to pick something, make a primary prevention for it, secondary prevention, and tertiary. You want it to be shorter to those one like this, or do you want to If it, you think that's enough to get the point across, Okay. Primary, stop signs, secondary, seatbelts, tertiary, EMS, that makes sense. Primary, not feeding your dog wrong food, like explain that one. Okay. So, advanced assignments, and then there's a fill in the blank area. Cool. Questions on that? Questions on anything so far? Alright, enjoy your day off tomorrow.